Yeah, that Jeep Ruby guy. Oh. Oh my god. Can't stand him. The guy keeps pissing me off. I know. I, the guy just doesn't <laughs> stop. And what was the last thing he actually finished, that guy? I don't even know. I lost count. I used to keep a running tally on my whiteboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, it's the viewers. Dun, dun, dun. Oh no. Oh, damn it, not again. I had Somebody's to kill been eavesdropping on us. We're foiled. <laughs> Welcome to the very first Renegade X podcast of 2010. I'm your host, Fabi. Yes, you are. Hey, I'm Mavic Kitty Nine. I think. Yeah, I think you and are too. I'm John. Man, John, really? Annoying. Not even like a last name or yeah. a, like a middle name. Just I'm John. Bob. This is our first podcast in a very long time. I mean, when was the last one, Havoc? Like September or something? I think so. That was like um, December. I think it was Maybe. actually before no any of our releases. This is like back when we were still, you know, making the mod. Yeah, but I think it might have actually been a uh, December still, like the year before. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah. So we've got a few topics to go over during this uh, eventful podcast. We'll mostly be going over our latest project on Renegade X called Black Dawn. Operation Black da, Dawn. Da, da. Da, da, da. Operation Black Dawn <laughs> is the very first standalone aspect of Renegade X. It is a single player demonstration level. It is just one level. And it'll be the most awesome thing you've ever seen, pretty much, coming out of this team. Pretty like, this is it. big news. It doesn't sound like it's big, but it, it is. It's huge. Come on, with a name like Black Dawn, you know it's big. <laughs> so for those who don't know That's what Black racist. Dawn is, the team recently has got its hands on the Unreal Development Kit, released by Epic Games. And the Unreal Development Kit allows us to create a standalone version of Renegade X. Now since there's a lot of preliminary steps that are necessary before we head to the multiplayer, we thought we could make a small detour and start our own single player level as a demonstration for those who uh, you know, wanted to try Renegade X for its first time. Now Unreal Tournament 3 is not even necessary to play this. So what does Black Dawn revolve around? Any of you guys remember the first mission of Command and Conquer? Tiberian Dawn? Uh, the uh, the beach thingy, you know that one. Yeah. Yeah, with the you know the gunboats and the beach and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got you got it right. You yeah, got it right. The Turks and the uh, MCV and you know blowing up the. Except this one doesn't have an MCV. You know that was part of the plans, but <laughs> Havoc took it out. That would have been awesome. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. What? what? Me. I yeah, totally you were like, it's to too much that, work. But, uh, you guys were like, no, it's too much work. <laughs> I thought that was you. Or was that me? It could have been me. But I wanted to see that. None of... Wasn't I the one who suggested it, though? You did suggest it, but then, like, two weeks later, I think you forgot that you suggested it, and then you just stopped agreeing with it. But it's okay, because that would have taken a long time anyways. It probably would have, yeah. A lot of work. Animation work, coding work... You name it. Anyways. Yeah. So why I brought up that mission is because, well, pretty much, Black Dawn is a beachhead invasion where GDI has its gunboats aligned on the sea, sends out hovercrafts full of troops and tanks to the beachhead while Nod defends it with its base and with its, you know, turrets and shore defense units and all that other good stuff. Black Dawn is going to feature weapons, vehicles, pretty much everything that you would expect in invading a beach island stronghold. Occupied by Nod. Yes, yes. And the storyline consists of Mobius being captured by the Brotherhood of Nod and being taken to this island stronghold. And uh, without revealing too much, you're, you're going to be playing Havoc. Not Havoc 89, because that would totally suck. But Havoc, Nick Parker. Really suck, but the Commando. That much fun. Well, dude, what, you can't even use a weapon, so shh. Yeah, that's right. I don't need a weapon. I could kick your ass right now. Yeah, you can't kick Nod's ass with Kane and his shiny head. Yeah, I probably not. Yeah, that's what I thought. Without revealing mm. too much, uh, you're going to be accompanied by some other Dead Six people, but I'm not going to be giving their names because it's all a big surprise. Like many surprises that will be coming along the road, the first of which 
Renegade X Operation Black Dawn. Of course, us being an indie game, many of you may ask, when will this Black Dawn project be released? And uh, we're actually planning on releasing it when it's done. What do you say about that, Havoc? I think that sounds about right. Yeah, that sounds that's about right. Oh, uh, a release date, you ask? Yeah, uh, the release date is the actual day that it's done. What do you say about that, Havoc? I concur. Yes, indeed. Avalanche, any thoughts? <laughs> not particularly. We just got a lot of work left to do. You're not supposed to tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, now that we've got that release date issue, it's a non-issue now, okay? We've answered your question about it. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to be handing the mic over to our lead programmer for Black Dawn here, Avalanche. Here's Avalanche. What? <laughs> <laughs> Here's where you talk about the things... Sorry, I was being molested. Okay. Dude, you gotta keep that part in. That's hilarious. I will, I will. <laughs> Pretty much what we have to do is there's a bunch of stuff that was in the .5 beta that needs to be redone and structured so we can remove, hopefully, quite a few of the bugs that were present in .5 and be able to extend for the future if necessary. And a lot of the reasons why we sort of have to redo a lot of things is because initially we didn't really know what we were doing and it kind of ended up being very unoptimized. Yeah, if the code is highly unorganized, then there's going to be a lot of calls to where they don't need to be, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Ultimately, that slows down the experience. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah, very much so. If it's not organized right, then it's not going to work right. Yeah, I think we've said that as many times as we possibly could. In different words. So too. <laughs> we shall say it fifty more times. Just to get the point across. Next yes. on the list, uh, Avalanche. Uh, the pretty much the, a lot of the work that we're doing for Black Dawn, most of it will carry over to when we start working on the multiplayer build. And it's like pretty much all the weapons will transfer over. Much of the uh, pawn code will transfer over, and I think most of the vehicle code will transfer over too. I yep. don't know if we have to do. I don't know if there's any that we will have to redo. That'll be something we'll come across as we start developing. The HUD, yeah, the HUD's been something I've been working on for a little bit, and it's taken me a little bit because I've been working in Flash, and I'm a programmer. I don't like Flash. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like working in Flash, put it that way. And so I've got not, a um, test version I'm in sorry. right now that's working kinda, and it's looking pretty spiffy so far. And I'm just hoping to get the rest of it done, hopefully by the end of the week. Tell us some of the cool things uh, we could do with the <coughs> latest version of the UDK with the uh, heads-up display. Ah, yes. The, uh, with the May release of the UDK, we get something called Scale Form, which pretty much allows us to create a UI in Flash, uh, import it into the Unreal Engine, and then write some back-end code, and we have a very pretty-looking UI. It gives us much more flexibility with the way they're designed. The UIs can then be designed by actual UI artists instead of by programmers. Which Two saves words. programming time a lot. Three dimensional. That's true. If you guys uh, just head over to the Scaleform website and check out some of their stuff, uh, I think you guys would be amazed at what's yeah, it's possible. Yeah, phenomenal. Now. Like Scaleform was used in Crisis Two. It's being used in uh, Mass Effect Two right now. I think it was also used in Mass Effect One. It was used in Dragon Age Origins. It's been used in a lot of high-profile games. Really robust technology. And, I mean, just to spice things up just a little bit, Avalanche, uh, what, in your opinion, is the hardest thing on the programming end for Black Dawn? That's, that we have to get done before launch? Yes. I would have to say the hardest thing right now would have to be the story system and the HUD at the moment. Those are the hardest things that need to be done. But then again, issues could crop up with other things that are working on and that can make them hellacious. And I think some of the things that we will be doing with the artificial intelligence is going to be interesting. Oh, yeah. Well, we got to right. make them able to use purchase terminals later on. 
Yeah, for now the uh, AI is pretty much going to act as a single player AI and it's going to shoot at you when you uh, go up to them and such. And also when you don't go up to them, they will shoot at you. But uh, the AI in future <laughs> versions will be much more sophisticated and they'll be coded specifically for CNC mode. So this is like a first step towards that, I guess. Right. Yeah, it's the first iteration on it. All right, okay, well, moving on to the next group of subjects, I'm going to hand the mic over to Havoc89, who has been, well, he's the producer, so he's been working with the engine, and he could give us some spicy things about that. Well, I guess we should start with uh, the differences between, you know, the Unreal Engine from UT3 and the UDK. It's it's grown up. It's It has matured. Like, Unreal Tournament 3, it was pretty good looking, but um, it had a lot of issues. It had a lot of backdoor solutions. Um, but, you know, with the UDK, this is, like, top-of-the-line sort of thing with Unreal Engine 3. All the features, um, like, from Gears of War 2, they're all in here. You got your, uh, you know... Even your features from Gears of War 3 that's still being developed. Right. Yeah. And... The engine is, is always being updated, like, on a monthly basis. And, that you know, they always come up with new tools, keep on uh, doing a lot of bug fixes, enhancements, and all that stuff. So that's great. We, we're always, like, at the at the front lines, so to speak. Well, I guess the biggest thing um, would be the visuals. You guys will definitely see a huge improvement in uh, the lighting engine, just because of uh, the way that it's handled now, it's done through light mass. You know, that yeah. way uh, you, you kind of get, like, those uh, radiosity and ambient occlusion and the global illumination effects where, uh, you know, light's actually bouncing off of different surfaces and carrying with it uh, sort of color and uh, intensity to with every sort of bounce that it does. And it, it really helps to... to make the lighting feel a lot more realistic and and not so harsh. With the UDK, I noticed that there's a lot more emphasis on trying to make things look realistic. Like with the May build, they released some new foliage that you'd expect like in Crisis and some new rock formations. And as well as, you know, the lighting that Havoc mentioned, which just gives the mod so much of a more realistic look and not just that sort of unreal look that you see in, you know, previous Unreal Engine games. We're no longer a mod. Or, you know, full on indie game. Standalone, you know. Yeah, I know, but you know, I mean, come when on, like it's it's been like three years of us being a mod, so you know, it's just sometimes, you know, human I, beings I, make I, that I mistake. Know, like even it is it is hard for me to sort of not say mod anymore, but I mean we we are kinda of talking about this and to the people and to the public and should tell them, you know, we're we're taking up the, the next step sort of. No longer a mod. You're absolutely right. And so I avoid this problem altogether and just call it a project. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so Havoc, sure. uh, Whatever. can you tell us a little bit about the new features, the special new stuff that we're going to be uh, having? Well, um, there were some things that uh, we didn't really fully utilize back in the UT3 days. Um, but we are now, and if you remember looking at some of the UT3 vehicles where you just shot at them and they kind of deformed, we got that now. That that's working properly, it, and it looks uh, it looks awesome, wouldn't you say? I think it looks great. More targets. Oh, that looks phenomenal. And yeah, the, it really brings up so much more life into the vehicles. We also got some new uh, custom built special effects. Uh, not all of them are made. we got a lot of work to do ahead still, but uh, they're looking a lot nicer. And, well, I think I just heard a dog. Yeah, I apologize for that. Okay. Um, well, I've been experimenting a lot with the UDK, and uh, we've recently sort of dived into some... I don't know, I guess we're really just pushing the engine a lot. And one of the things we, we came up with is uh, time of day. So we have this fully working dynamic lighting system. But it's not really fully dynamic. Um, kind of like halfway in between uh, static and dynamic, where you have uh, the sun or the moon, your main sort of light, is your primary dynamic light. And all the other lights in the map, like uh, that would be you know like a lamppost, for example, those would all be uh, static lighting, and they would actually generate their own 
uh, light maps for each object that they interact with. And this way, we actually barely even touch the frame rate. I think um, from my initial testing, I actually improved my frame rate, which I don't really understand how that happened. But uh, apparently, yeah, I, I ended up getting uh, higher performance with this new system. So um, we do have that working in Black Dawn right now. It's not complete. It's not uh, fully functional yet. But uh, expect there to be something like that working. Uh, I remember a while ago, before we actually announced this project, people assumed that there would be some sort of uh, weather system. I just want to point that out right now, that no, there is no system like that. We probably could come up with a system like that. I don't know if it's going to happen, though. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I guess time will tell. I guess what but, would, kind of, would be yeah. kind of interesting would be uh, to implement a system like that specifically for super weapons. Yeah, I was thinking the same too, but I think uh, we could do that through um, through, through uh, having like layered skyboxes and uh, post-processing effects. So rather than, because I mean it was only really just ashes that fall, fell from the sky, it wasn't really uh, rain, it was just like you, you just heard thunder, but I guess we could put it in rain. It would be kind of cool. All right, guys. Well, we thank you for joining us for our first podcast in a long time. I mean, it was a pleasure. We had a lot of fun with it. And hopefully uh, you guys all learned a bit from it. So uh, check out the latest update, which should be up by the time you're hearing this, for some new pictures of the daytime system uh, that Havoc just mentioned and Black Dawn, <clears throat> and some new information. Definitely check that out. And I just want to throw the word out there that this team is recruiting we're looking for new members day by day. If you want to increase your portfolio, we're the guys, man. So uh, if you're a yep. character artist, we are looking for you <clears throat> specifically. And the ex expertise that we need is uh, we need a character artist that can create high poly models, low poly models, normal maps, uh, and create 2048 by 2048 textures. Uh, we're looking for programmers, pretty much, if you have experience in Unreal Script, uh, that's phenomenal, but if you also have experience in, like, uh, heavy C++ or C Sharp or even Java, uh, those languages, the bulk of it transfers over to Unreal Script, so it's really easy to pick up if you have a basis in programming. And, uh, finally, we're if looking for environment, environmental artists, as, uh... I mean, multiplayer is just around the corner, and uh, nothing's better than having a few new maps ready for that time. And I guess prop modelers, too, and uh, Avalanche is just mentioning uh, guys who can um, make Flash UIs, so I guess that is also a good idea. So we're always recruiting. Yes, and save me from the horrors of Flash. <laughs> well, like you said in the beginning, he's a programmer, not a Flash guy. What are Flash guys? Are they called something? Flash artist? That They're doesn't flashy. sound right. Flash designers? I mean, we could use all the help we could get. We need a lot of prop guys because, um, you know, we, we don't... We're not really using Unreal Tournament 3 anymore, so we don't really have access to a lot of those, uh, you know, like static meshes that uh, populate the levels. So... Uh, Guys who can make props, we definitely need uh, those, but I guess that does sort of fall into the environment artist category. All right, so I thank you all for listening to this podcast, and uh, our latest version is Renegade X 0 0.5, and it's available for download on www.renegade-x.com and also on our ModDB page. So farewell from Fabi. Have lunch. And from Havoc. Goodbye! That was lame.